Welcome. This is uh, uh, 2049B1, and uh, this first section is called uh, Wave Characteristics. Um, so, waves occur when a family, a group of oscillators, are connected together so that the energy in one oscillator can be transmitted to another oscillator and they're connected together in a couple of different ways it could be tension so in a piece of string each particle is connected to the next particle by tension so if one particle is oscillating it will affect its neighbors and in something like air or a fluid uh, the particles are connected together by uh, um, uh, collisions as one particle oscillates it bounces into its neighbors and transmits energy so the key thing is that a wave medium is made up of a family of oscillators and as they uh, transmit the energy so the energy transfer is manifest is shown as could be a crest and a trough of a wave say on on a water beaker or it could be uh, high pressure and low pressure uh, um, sections in a in a in a tube of air um, okay, so we have a medium where the particles can communicate, the oscillators can communicate, and so we can have waves, and there's two families of waves typically that we see. We see a longitudinal wave. In a longitudinal wave, what you find is that the direction of the oscillation, the plane of the oscillation, backwards and forwards, horizontally say, is the same uh, axis as the direction of the energy flow. This happens, for example, in air. If I'm speaking to you, then the particles of air will go backwards and forwards along a line that's between me and you. In a line in any direction going away from me, but as far as you're concerned, between me and you. If you could see the particles, they'd be moving backwards and forwards between me and you. The particles don't make it from my mouth to your ear. That would be, you know, bad. They just go backwards and forwards, but they push their neighbors who push their neighbors who push their neighbors. So longitudinal is when the axis of the oscillation of the medium is the same axis as the energy propagation or the wave propagation. Typically it happens uh, where you just have particles near each other, that, that uh, for instance, air or water. Um, so we can... Um, also sub-characterize longitudinal waves as being longitudinal wave pulses when there's just a burst of energy. A little click would give a longitudinal wave pulse. There's no disturbance, then there's a disturbance which is traveling, and then there's no disturbance. Alternatively, there's a longitudinal wave train, which is a hum, which goes on a while. And so what you'd find, if you were to look at the pressure uh, inside the air, you would see high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. We'd call that a train. So longitudinal wave pulse, longitudinal wave chain, train. I'd like you to be able to look at the diagram and name it, or given the name, draw me the diagram. The other alternative is a transverse wave. And in a transverse wave, the oscillation direction the axis of oscillation is 90 degrees to the energy propagation direction so for instance if you're on a lake and there's waves on the lake you'll find that the waves will say move across towards you but the actual oscillation goes up and down again we can and, and this can only occur if there's some kind of tension now in water there's surface tension which enables that in uh, a piece of string, there's the string tension, etc. But to have transverse, you need tension. Um, and so what we find is there's two characterizations for that. There's the transverse wave pulse. This is one isolated oscillation. There's, there's no energy. There's no uh, uh, disturbance before it. There's the disturbance which is traveling. There's no disturbance after it. And then there's transverse wave train where the, the energy keeps moving, 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 moving. Got to be a little careful with these diagrams because I'm showing a termination to them 
and eventually the energy would bounce back and cause what's called standing waves. We're not there yet. I'm assuming the energy hasn't got to the end yet, so it's not bounced back. There's a point you'll, you'll appreciate later on rather than at the moment. So in these four cases, I'd like you to be able to draw the diagram given the name or name the uh, 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 type of wave characterization uh, given the diagram. In seismology, uh, they refer to these as primary and secondary waves uh, because they have different speeds. Typically, a longitudinal wave is faster and a transverse wave is slower. And if you know the speeds of these two waves, then you can measure how far they are apart in time. And then you can, from that, work out how far away the disturbance that caused them was. And so that's the basis of how they know where earthquakes take place. Um, let's do a little bit of question check. True or false, a ripple in is an example of a longitudinal wave pulse. I'm assuming here that there's basically one ripple. It doesn't go on and on forever. Um, so yes, it is a pulse, but longitudinal? No, on a ripple, the water goes up and down, but the energy goes sideways. So that would be a transverse. So that's a false statement. And then true or false, a hum is an example of a, a longitudinal wave train. Well, it's a train because it goes on and on, hmm, carriage after carriage after carriage, rather like, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, oscillation after oscillation after oscillation. And it's longitudinal because it's in air, so it's a hum, it's longitudinal, so that would be a true statement. And then recalling the notes, what does this diagram represent? Well, it's a speaker with a a tube filled with air or liquid and I'm seeing a whole bunch of compressions and rare refractions so that would be a, a longitudinal wave train so that's a longitudinal wave train and then recalling the notes what does this diagram present and this is clearly transverse it's a stretched string the oscillation is vertically whereas the energy flow is sideways and there's only one of them so this would be a transverse wave pulse so there we have it. It's good to know the language because people expect it. So get to know the language so you can talk about uh, waves. So there we have it.